Welcome to Easy English by Eddie Singh and today we are going to explore one of the burning social issues, corruption in public life, a great concern for everyone. Dear children, the present topic is quite relevant and objective to the fact that India being a democratic country is most affected by the rampant corruption. Corruption is defined as any sort of unlawful, illegal, unjustified practice in public or private life. It is also being defined as the practice of taking and giving bribe, allowing immoral acts to happen in public dealings. I believe that corruption is devouring <coughs> the all-round development of our nation. You will ask, sir, tell me, sir, how? Definitely. Yes, Dipal, you will ask the question, sir, how is corruption the biggest hurdle to a Indian democracy? You can ask this question. Well, see, there is a data. The data suggests that in India, corruption is almost rampant in day-to-day -day life in almost all the offices. May call it uh, public administration, call it, I mean, district administration, administration, call it a state administration, call it national administration. Everywhere corruption is being in the news. In the recent study, you might have heard, listen on, study you might have heard about one of the, I mean, top <coughs> level officer of CBI was <coughs> just being, you know, convicted. Rather, the decision came that he will not have the right to I mean, give any decision and probe the cases and a new person has been given the temporary charge of conducting the probe. Am I right? You must have heard of Mr. Burma who has been removed from his acting post. Am I right? This is one example how the government is interfering into the judiciary. Even the highest, I mean, the so-called, the premier institution called Central Bureau of Inve Investigation that is being considered the highest and the most, I mean, top level, you may call it, investigation agency of the government. There also, there is, I mean, a talk of corruption and the, a, a so-called, I mean, officer, the top level officer has been convicted of being involved in Charges of corruption. Charges of? Corruption. Not only that, there are innumerable examples of corrupt practices being, <coughs> I mean, in the notice of the public in most of the top level government offices. Say, you, you know the scam, the fodder scam. You know all of you. Do you know or not? Fodder scam? Yes. You know Rafael D. Rafael, which is in news now. You also know before that, you there was a Wadra's case of deal. With this, you know, Vadra, Mr. Vadra is the so-called, you know, the husband of Priyanka, you know, Gandhi, and uh, he was also involved. And there are so many, I mean, top-level officers who have been, uh, you know, alleged of the charges of corruption. And then the question also arises that we people in India, we are only the eyewitness of corrupt practices. Why? The question arises, why? If we know that really a corrupt practice is being I mean, uh, seen in the government offices, why do we witness just as, as a you know, citizen? Why can't we raise voices? That is the question. When we all know that corruption is prevailing in each and every walk of life, why can't we raise voices? Why can't we at least try to stop or curb the corruption? The very simple reason is that we think, why should we talk about Let others stop. We always wait for somebody else to raise the voice then ne never, corruption will never be rooted out, never be removed, never be curbed from our society. The first and foremost thing that is to be done to root out corruption is to create awareness. Let the people know that this is something which is not only hampering our progress and the national progress, it is also affecting our day-to-day -day life. Day-to-day? -day? Yes. For instance, giving bribe and taking bribe is rampant in every offices. Am I right? Each and every office, whether it is a government office, whether it is a private office, you will see that a back door 
allowance is there. If you are willing to get the work done quicker, you have to give bribe from the back door. Why, why should you not wait in the queue and get the done thing done legitimately, legally? Why should you, I mean, give bribe to get the work done quickly? Why can't you wait for your chance? This is something that we have to understand. We have to understand that we are in a hurry to get the things done. Why not we are waiting in the queue? Let the things be done in, in a system. There must be a system. And let the system be uh, given the greater preference in day to day life. Now, so far as the institutions, schools and colleges are concerned, Dipali, you will agree with me that lot of corruption is prevailing even in educational institutions. You ask sir how? Giving unjustified marks to some of the students, allowing unfair means to happen in the exam. Is it not corruption? Tell me. If we, if we are not fair in our daily, if students and teachers are not fair in daily, how can we expect the other people? Because tomorrow you are going to take up an administrator, tomorrow you are going to be technocrats, tomorrow you are going to be the politicians. If the students of today are allowed to practice unfair means in exam, we, if we are allowing, I mean, something like giving extra marks to those who are in our good book, is it not corruption? So even in the institutions, college and schools, corruption is prevailing. Corruption is? So, the, I mean, the fact is that corruption has become just like a cancer in public life. It is devouring our progress in day-to-day -day life. Am I right? So the question now arises, you ask now, all of you ask at least one question, how we can really curb corruption? Curb, curb means reduce. Corruption cannot be stopped because right from the British era, it has been prevailing in public life and private life, but it can be minimized. So what is the best way to minimize corruption? The best way to minimize corruption, because there is, you know, there is anti-corruption agency also. There is, you know, you know, Lokpal, you know, no, you have heard of the Lokpal or not? Lokpal, Lokpal is the body which is working to stop corruption. It is just against corruption. But the only thing is that by just making the Lokpal, things cannot be clear. The people who are the governing bodies, the people who are the administrators, they should be fair. They should be justified. They should not allow any corrupt practices to happen in day to day life. Then only this will be removed or curbed. And for instance, let us start it from our, I mean, small institutions like schools and colleges. You know, if the students are fair, if they are aware of the, I mean, impact of corruption or the effect of corruption or the consequences of corruption in the society, they can really become, uh, you know, the harbinger to stop the corruption. And what they can do? They can just mobilize the people to raise voices. Once you raise voices, that is the opening. Once you understand that, yeah, this is being unjust. This is being unjustified. This is illegal. This is not fair. This is unfair. Once you understand that something unfair is being practiced in public or private life, you have to raise voice. You have to mobilize the people to become the voice of the people. Because in the democracy, the voice of the people can bring a change. What can bring a change in the democracy? Tell me. The voice of the people. If the people are united against any crop practices, if the people are aware against any crop practices, if people are vigilant against corruption, I think corruption cannot even, even put a stake in the public life. And for doing so, we have to teach the students all the moral and ethical values. Why, I mean, the modern generation is thinking of, uh, I mean, uh, you know, becoming millionaire overnight. Every one of us wants to become rich overnight. Now, thinking just to become rich just overnight without doing hard work, this means you are giving away to corruption. If a public servant wants to have two flats, three flats, if an MLA or MP wants to become, I mean, rich overnight or in one year or two years, that, that definitely he will... I mean, devour the public money. What will do? Tell me. A public servant or a public officer or a, an administrative officer can become rich and overnight and can have more and more possessions only when he takes pride. Then, because by fair practice, nobody can have high flats. One MLA, one MP, he's having flat in each and every big city. How? 
How can he acquire all, all this wealth? This is the public money they are devouring. So to, I mean, root out corruption, we have to be vigilant. We have to be aware that no. And if each and every citizen understands that anything that is unlawful, anything that is unfair must not happen, must not, I think corruptions can be minimized. For that reason, you have, you people have to be vigilant, aware, and a little bit cautious also. And but most importantly, the education can be the greatest weapon to root out corruption. If the modern generation is being taught with ethical and moral values, let each and every student understand that what is his moral responsibility, what is his ethical responsibility, how I mean strong he is at his character, how I mean strong he is in his inner qualities, values, truth, honesty, devotion, nationality, integrity, honesty. These are the values that need to be inculcated among the youth because the youth can really become the harbinger of bringing a fair government, bringing a and most important, the election commission needs reforms. The election commission must not allow anyone to contest election who is convicted of corruption charges. Con 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 convicted of corruption charges. He should never be given any ticket to contest election. So election commission also need to reform certain rules. Certain and most importantly, the public life. I mean the public, the most important, that is like you know, the panchayat. The district administration, the state administration, the, nation, uh, the, the central administration, they all have to work in coordination for the welfare of the people. Let, I mean, the people and the public decide what is right and what is wrong. And most importantly, <coughs> the electronic media can play a key role in rooting out corruption. Because unless they are going to show what is right and what is wrong, we cannot really come to know what is wrong happening. Now we are happy that the media is very powerful now. They are focusing their attention on anything being done wrong in our public life. And they are bringing it to light. And once the things come to light that it are the wrong practices, people become aware. They raise their voice. And then what happens? That the government also become aware and vigilant. Vigilant? So vigilance against corruption. Say like that. Vigilance against corruption. Vigilance against corruption. Awareness of the public. Can really play an instrumental role in curbing corruption. Now, two minutes question. Dipal, ask me question. Two minutes before we conclude. Sir, so what is the root cause of corruption? Yeah, poverty, ignorance, and unlawful practices prevailing in the society are the main causes of corruption in the society. We people nowadays, what is happening? Most of the people are unaware what is their right and what is their duty. Most of the public who are illiterate, illiteracy, poverty, ignorance, these are the main causes of prevailing corruption. People are not aware of what is wrong and what is right. When anybody asks for bribe, they give the money without questioning that person. Now, they are encouraging corruption because they do not know that giving bribe is wrong. It is unlawful. And why should we give bribe to any person? So that's the ignorance, rather you can say illiteracy. And what is the biggest problem? Because once a person is hungry, starving, he will never know about ethical values and moral values. Moral values is of no use to a person who is hungry. So let every person be fed, fed with food. Am I right? The government must make provisions that no person should starve. No person should if everybody is getting food, getting employment, there will be no corruption. There will be? No Thank you. Anybody else, please ask. Two more questions, please. Sajya, you can ask. She has asked question. This is question now. Yes. Why people think, uh, let them do work, we can't do stuff? Yeah, that's good. That we allow the people to do wrong things only because we are afraid. We are afraid of going to the court. We are afraid of raging voice. We know that that person is very powerful. We can't really harm that person. We can't really raise the voice. Actually, we people should be bold enough to come forward and raise the voices. Raise the Shimran, what is your opinion? Tell me. Can, can corruption be rooted out from public life? Yes, sir. corruption is rooted out. Give one, I mean, one small way we can fight corruption at the low level, at the grassroots level. First of all, we should raise our voice. Voice. We should be aware. We yes. should be. And what? What 
we develop education in this regard. Sir, education. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, by educating the person, yes. you know what is the difference in the right way or the wrong Very good. Education can be the greatest weapon in rooting of corruption. Do you understand? Is it right? Yes. yes, please. Just tell one thing. Other than education, what should we do? Why electing our representatives? Should we really, I mean, vote according to qualification of that candidate, work of the candidate, or should we go by caste or creed or religion? Because many of the people vote for caste or uh, religion. Generally, voting is being done. I tell you one thing, excuse me, yes, please. Most of the people go according to caste, creed, and religion. That this, this candidate is of my caste. So, should we vote according to the merit of the candidate or should we vote according to the caste, creed, and religion? No, sir, no, sir. Caste, caste and creed should be abolished. Very good. And Qualification and merit. Very good. That's true. That means all of you agree that we should not see the caste, creed and religion. Yes, yes. And we should also not allow such candidate to win the election who is, I mean, having nexus to criminalization. Political nexus. Criminalization in politics should be avoided. Should be? Avoided. There should be a strict law that no criminal should be given a ticket to contest the election. Am I right? Yes. And most importantly, all the public servants should be, I mean, accountable to Lokpal. Accountable to? Lokpal. There should be a thorough, I mean, observation by Lokpal. Am I right? Yes. Lokpal should monitor the working of all the administrators. Am I right? And then these, I mean, scandal and scams will never happen. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes Thank you very much. Thus, we conclude that awareness and vigilance can lead to rooting out corruption. Rooting out? So, say all of you, let's be aware. Holy, let's be aware. Let's be aware. Let's be vigilant. Let's be vigilant. And let's say to <laughs> no corruption. No corruption. Never allow any corrupt practices to happen in the public life. Raise voices. Raise voices. Always be vigilant. Always be vigilant. A strangle corruption before it strangles democracy. Say like that. Strangle corruption. Strangle corruption. Before it. Before it. Strangles. Strangles. The democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.